Amen. I, I just feel the presence of the Lord in this place this morning. I feel the glory of God in this place. I just want to be led by his spirit, by his presence. Glory to God. He's awesome. Glory to God. He's awesome. You know, the enemy, the enemy has an assignment. You know how God gives us an assignment? But the enemy has an assignment. He's put spirits, demons, spirits out to on assignment. And his main goal is, his main goal is to knock you off focus. That's his main goal, is, is, to, is to get you off focus. And listen, he'll use anybody and everybody he can and I don't care who it is your enemies so you so your so-called enemy the ones that you know don't like you your so-called friends are the ones who think you think like you family members sisters brothers wife husband whomever he can use the enemy can use to to knock you off focus He'll, 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 he'll do it. He'll use them. But I thank God the word of God declares that we are not ignorant to say Satan devices. His schemes and his plans. For we have the Holy Ghost who can give us foresight on what the enemy is trying to do. And today I'm telling you, the enemy is trying to cause you to lose focus. But don't lose focus. Don't lose focus. I don't care what it feels like, look like. Come on now. See, our hope is in him. The world has nothing to offer us but destruction. The Bible talks about two roads. It talks about a wide road. It said many people walking on that wide road. See, on that wide road, you, you're pretty much able to do whatever you want to do. See, on that wide road, you're pretty much able to, to go wherever you want to go. And then, see, there's many on that road, and those people are, are encouraging you. If it feels good, do it. If, if, if you're okay with it, do it. doesn't matter what nobody say. They can't live your life. Woman about six or seven months pregnant and, and wants to have an abortion, they, they know it's, it's, it's a, that's, a, that's a live human being on the inside of them. But people tell you, that's your choice. You got a choice. Do it. If you have an attraction to the opposite sex, do it. This is your life. Live in your own skin. We're on that, that, that wide road. And the Bible said there are many. There are many. But he said the end of there is, is destruction. Do it your way. God has given every man a will. And this is not even where I'm, I'm supposed to be going. But God has given every man a will. Anybody ever seen the movie, um, uh, what's the guy's name? He played in The Liar Liar. Uh, Jim Carrey. He played the movie, uh, no, well, he, 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 God gave him the power. Bruce Almighty. One of my favorite movies. What Morgan Freeman played God, what he told him was with his girlfriend, he said, you can do everything you can, but you can't touch a wheel. You got the power to do anything, but you cannot mess with nobody's wheel. God gave you a free wheel. God is not going to make you do anything. You have free will. You have free choice. Devil can't make you do anything, and God not going to make you do anything. 
So if you choose to walk on that road, God will allow you to. But he warns you that there in the end there is destruction. Now the Bible also talks about this, this narrow road. And watch this. It says, and few. And few. The Bible said, the King Raises and few there be that find it. In other words, there, there are few people that is walking on that road. Because the road is narrow. And you have to walk circumspectly. That means you have to be careful the way you walk. You have to be careful where you go, what you do, what you say. First of all, you want to please God. Secondly, there's a dying world out there that's watching you who proclaim the name of Jesus. And sadly to say, a lot of them is not showing a good, good advice. They're not showing good advice. They're, they're, they're not walking accordingly. Now, I'm not, we all sin every day. Every one of us. But the Bible talks about, I'm going to get into it in just a second. It talks about this grace. It says that whatever we do, whatever sin we commit, the Bible says his grace is sufficient. But then he said, shall we continue to sin so grace shall abound? He said, God forbid. He said, no. He, listen what the word says. Those that are born of God do not sin. But I just said we sin every day. And the Bible also said, he that says he has no sin is a liar. But understand what the Bible says. He that is born of God do not sin. That means he, we do not practice sin. Wallow in it constantly every day. That's not the way of the Christian. Oh, praise God. I, I feel the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. I'm going to read the scripture. You, you can remain seated. I'm going to read the scripture. Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5. I come to encourage the body of Christ. Love and action today. It's time for it to be about our Father's business. Ephesians 5, beginning at the 14th verse through the 20th. I'm reading out the NIV. It says, It says, Wake up, sleepers. Rise from the dead. Christ will find you. Be careful, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. Making the most of every opportunity. The King James, I'm reading out the NIV, the King James version says, to redeem the time. Because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk on wine. Which is leave to our battery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and in hymns, songs from the Spirit, sing and make music for your hearts to the Lord. Always giving thanks to God. Glory to God, the Father for, for everything, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Church, it's time for us to wake up and to be about our Father's business. Just nudge your neighbor and tell him, wake up, wake up, wake up. I promise you, give me about 15 minutes, I'll be done. The Bible says that it's by grace through faith that we are saved. This is not of your own, it is a gift of God. Not of works, so that no one can boast. No one can boast about this thing called salvation. No one can boast about it. I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't care how many titles you have. The Bible declares it's by the grace of God that you know him. It's by his grace. Grace is God's unearned favor, unmerited favor. We, we didn't pay for it. We, we didn't earn it. It was freely given unto us. 
freely. The Bible says in John 1, 17, it said that the law came through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Somebody say, thank God for Jesus. Come on, somebody say, thank God for Jesus. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. See, the law was our schoolmaster. But because of what Christ has done, he has freed us from the law of sin and death. Watch this. Jesus didn't do away with the law, but he fulfilled the law. See, you got to understand what the Bible says when we're no longer under the law. That means that, that means that thou shalt not kill don't apply to me no more. It doesn't mean that. What it means is that, that that law don't have no more rule over me because Christ, Christ fulfilled it for me. Now that I'm in Christ, it says, though I have fulfilled it. Understand that. Don't get that twisted. See, a lot of what, what I, I, I believe what we have done, the body of Christ and, and that society, we've taken the grace of God for granted. We made the grace of God of no avail. Oh, the grace of God. Oh, I, you know, I, and I, I've heard preachers say that, that they have messed up. Oh, I'm just a man. And they use it in a sense as an excuse. Yeah, you're a man. You're, you're a natural man. Not saying that you are, you're going to fall at times. But to wallow in it, the Bible says, listen, to whom much is given, much is required. You're at a different position than anybody else. You've been called by God. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Walking with God every day. Come on, don't give me that thing, I'm just a mere man, as an excuse. The Bible calls a man who is walking after his own heart every day. I mean, I'm talking about you trying to really live the thing. The Bible calls that a perfect man. A perfect man. We've taken this grace thing and we've twisted it. And we use it in an excuse to do what we want to do. But God forbid. Listen, now that we're free from the law, it does not give us a right to sin. God forbid. Before grace came, Brother David, when people were sinning, they might drop dead. Before grace came, you know, you stole something. God might kill you right down the spot. For some, he had mercy. His mercy was there. And he said, I choose to have mercy on whom I want to have mercy on. So you better thank God for his grace, the dispensation of grace that we're living in now. To those that are saved, it's like this right here. You see them people walking them, them tight ropes in them circuses? When they walk a tight rope, they trying everything they can to stay up on it. Everything they can. See, in, 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 the, in the old time, in the days of past, before Christ came, before, mercy, before grace was introduced, it was though they was walking a tight rope with no safety net. And they was to fall, they'll drop dead. But what, what God did was, he said, I want you to continue to try to walk that tight rope, Sister Zakita. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you a safety net. See, that's what grace is supposed to be to us. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a safety net. In all your effort to live like, you, like, like God wants you to live, when you do sin, when you do fall, when you do make a mistake, grace catches you. And watch this. Once grace catches you, we got the spirit of God. We are to be godly sorry for the sin we've committed. Not that saying, oh, I'm a mere man, I'm going to mess up. With that kind of attitude, no. We should say, God, I'm sorry. It should hurt us when we displease him. But we go on, I mean, we go on like nothing ain't never happened. Now, yeah, God wants to pick ourselves up, you know, maybe cry on a little bit, brush ourselves off. Okay, I'll forgive you, now move on. But yet, as soon as we do it, we back up like ain't nothing ever happened. Because we are taking the grace of God for granted. This thing was freely given to you. Precious. Jesus is the grace of God. God gave his precious son. He gave us grace through him, his precious. And we handle that thing like it ain't worth nothing. Grace is precious. 
You need to act like you got a, a bar of gold in your hand worth millions of dollars when you're dealing with grace. But we treat it like it's, like it's nothing. Like God's supposed to do that for us. Like God has to. No. No. No, no, no. Listen, we're getting somewhere. Jesus is the grace of God. Understand that it was grace that saved him. Grace covers us. Grace catches us. But watch this. As I was doing a little study, I also found out what grace does. Grace empowers you. Grace empowers you. Grace empowers you. And what we got to do with the body of Christ, we got this time for us to flip this thing and stop taking that grace for granted and walk in the power of God's grace. Walk in the power of God's grace. It's time to walk in the power of God's grace. That scripture says for those who are sleeping some, it's time for us to wake up, body of Christ. Wake up, rise from the dead. Come on, get out of your slumbering state. Get out of that state of, of, of laziness and don't want to do nothing for God. Get out of that state that now I'm saved, I can sit back and relax. I want to enjoy my life. I want to do it my way. No, let's get out of that state. We have to be about our father's business. Look at the empty chairs in this place. Come on. It's time to be about our father's business. The word of God declares, if the, the word of God declares in Matthew 5, it says that, we are the salt of the earth. We are the salt of the earth. Pastor Jason preached, I think it was on last week, he said, this really ain't church in here. We, we're not doing church. We, we're just coming and we're fellowshipping and, and, and gaining strength. Church is out there. That's what, that, that's what we need to go do church at. And see, we are the salt of the earth. Why are you going to keep a salt inside the salt shaker? It ain't going to do you no good. Why keep the salt inside the salt shaker? It's just sitting there to be admired. You know, salt is, you know, put it in pepper, black and white, that pretty color. You sit there, you can put it in all kind of fancy containers that you want to. You can build a church. You can build a three-story high steeple. You can put this all kind. But it's, no, it's not effective until you go apply it to something. And we waiting on them to come. I'm telling y'all, I, I remember we used to go to conferences uh, 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 when Carlton Prison was doing conferences in Atlanta and the Williams guy, they all, somebody had a saying, if you build a church, they, they'll come. If you build it, they'll come. If you build it, they'll come. And see, back then, everybody was just so amazed at all these big churches that were being built. If you build it, they'll come. Well, I'm here to tell you, they might come for the first couple of days just to see what you got. Then you look two or three weeks later, a month later, or six months down the road, you're going to be empty. Doesn't matter how, how beautiful the salt shaker is. If you don't get that salt outside there and let it do what it's supposed to do. And listen, we've been, I don't know if we're done with the me versus me, but we've been preaching me versus me. And um, we brought some people have brought some awesome message. But I think it's time now we've, had, we've examined ourselves. Okay. We put the old man to death. Okay. We got everything right. All right, now we're ready. Everybody's on process. God us on one accord. Now let's go out and take this city like God has called us to. Let's get outside of the soul shaker. I don't know too much about ingredients and how to mix up, but, you know, to me, anything, if you let anything set too long, it begins to either spoil or lose its luster or lose its, its strength or capacity. You let that salt just sit there long enough. It ain't going to be as strong as it was when you first bought it. Now, I don't, I don't know how long salt can hold its, its savior or whatever. I don't know. It's salt in this. I don't know. But I guarantee you one thing. You let it sit there long enough, it's going to lose its saltiness. It's going to lose its savior, the Bible says. And after that, what good is it after that? That means if... if, if if we sit in here long enough not doing nothing, we're going to eventually lo lose our zeal, all right? We're going to eventually lose our, our uh, uh, um, influence that we have. And when we do go out there, we're not going to be affected. 
And the Bible says that salt, when it's like that, it's no good for nothing to be trampled on by men. And Pastor says, I remember you talk, preached one time way back, gave an illustration. See, in the Bible days, they lived in the house and their roofs were flat. And they would put that clay stuff up there. So after they get done using the salt, like they, how you do with the meat with the salt, cure it out. So once that salt has lost its savior, salt in it, they would take the salt and put it on top of the roof to make the roof more, more sturdier. The salt that have lost its savior, that's why the Bible says it's no good for it to be trampled on by men. In that, in that same chapter, the next verse, I think Matthew said, he said, also, we are the light of the world. Why we got our light behind the bush? The Bible said, what do a man do? He take it and put his light behind the bush? No, he sets it on a hill where it can get light to everybody. We are the light of the world, people of God. We are the ones who can show them the way. We have the truth. Why are we sitting on it? Let's go give it to the world. For those that don't receive it, you dust your feet off and go to the next door. You know, we, 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 talk, about the, we talk about the witness. You know what I'm talking about, Brother Roe? I know we on Facebook Live, I think. We talk about them, but one thing about it, <laughs> they are knocking on the doors. Come on, they got, some, they got some things messed up, but, they, but listen, they are knocking on the doors. When are we going to be excited and zeal about, have a zeal about what we believe in? And like, and like we said, you know, sometimes they get doors slammed in their face. Sometimes they probably, you know, from non-say, they probably even get cursed out. But every Sunday morning, you go to the neighborhood, they still walking them doors, knocking on them doors. We can grab anything from it. Let's grab that. Let's grab something from it. We ought to be witnessing for Jesus Christ. It's time. The Bible, it says in there, be not drunk with wine. See, what, 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 what Paul is saying right now, he's saying, because you know, y'all, some of y'all, you know, y'all y'all done got a little intoxicated before. You know, that stuff make you get reckless, make you act foolish. You wake up the next morning, you don't even can't remember what you did, where you parked your car, what, you know, what happened. You took me home, I took you home. So the Bible saying we, 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 don't, we don't be like that. We don't, we don't do reckless and riots and living. It tells us to be filled with the Spirit. In other words, be controlled by the Spirit of God. Because I'm, 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 I'm telling y'all, I'm going to close this thing. I'm telling y'all. It's a lot of stuff going on out there. It's a lot of stuff going on. A lot, lot, you know. It's a lot of stuff going on out there. People are being deceived every day. Y'all better hear me. I'm telling you how important it is for us to get out there with the truth. I got, I got some friends right now who started out believing in Jesus wholeheartedly. Wholeheartedly. But they've been deceived. They came at them with this black thing first black man. We was king. Why we got to serve a white man, God? And you would think somebody that, that was born again in the church wouldn't, wouldn't fall for that. But I'm telling you, man, the spirit of deception is strong and it's real. Because this, this morning we were singing about when I, I think I said something about, thank God I'm closed when I'm right mind. I might when I was opening up. You better thank God that you got your right mind. Don't take that for granted. So we better get out there with the truth. We better get out there with the truth. And tell them the truth about Jesus Christ. And like I said, I believe we, 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 we got ourselves together in here. We, re we were ready to go out. 
And y'all, I, I, I used to think it takes a whole lot of people. It don't take a whole lot of people. Gideon started out with about 10,000. He ended up with 300 and got the job done. He had 10,000. God told him, you got too many. So Hub, whenever you went to a battle and you got too many men to fight. God said, no, no, no. You're not on one accord. One time, Levin Action, we was packed to the max. But I don't know, I'm just asking a question, but what we don't want to call. Pastor Stacey, I, I, I believe, I believe now. I'm not saying we wasn't there, but I, I know now we don't want to call. We don't want to call, Sister Hope. Might not agree on everything. But, you know, that's the fact is, my dad came by my job. We were talking about Bible study a little bit. He said, well, as long as we agree, agree that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and he died for our sins, hey, we don't want a court. We don't want a court. So now, what are we going to do? And I'm telling you, listen, don't, don't wait for the next person. Don't wait, don't wait for Pastor Stacy. I mean, if you, if you got something you want to do, go, do in the church, of course, you got to go through him. But I'm just saying, don't wait and say, Pastor, what are we going to do? No, you got the Holy Ghost. You got the Spirit of God. You pray that God, God, what you want me to do? And if it come from God and you go to him, it's going to line up. One Spirit. Do we need to do a tent revival, God? Do we need to go knock on the door? Ask God, God, what you want? Don't ask God what, what you want somebody else. God, what you want me to do? What you want me to do? We just we don't want to fill the seat just to say we got to fill a house. But we know if the seats are filled, those are souls. Every seat in here is a soul. We want to impact the men as we can. Do what we've been called to do. It's time. It's time to wake up. We've enjoyed the little nap we've had. We took a little nap. All right, we've enjoyed the little nap. It was good. Go ahead and get that old yawn out. You know, and matter of fact, what happened is, you know, sometimes when you take a nap, don't get about five minutes. You look, it's been two hours. See, we, we, we've slept a little bit too long. We slept a little bit too long. The Bible said now we got to redeem some time. In other words, we got to make up some time. We, we, got that, that, we ain't got time to go slow. We got to come out the block wide open. Okay, we got to come out the block wide open. We got to come, and we got to hit them hard. We got to let them know we mean business, y'all. I'm talking when I say them. I'm talking about the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of darkness. Love and action, and we're gonna do it through love. We're gonna love the hell out of some people. Watch this now. We're not going to compromise. We're going to take our stand. I'm not putting down my standard. You know where I stand. I'll reach over there and I'll give you a hug. And I'll welcome you to my side. But I can't stay over there. I'll reach over there and give you a hug and say, hey, do you want to come here? Because this is my standard. I can't let down my standard. God didn't let down his standard for nothing. His standard is still the same. It's holiness or it's hell. That's the bottom line. That's it. You can try to fix it up any kind of way you want to. God is love and I guess he is. God is love. But his standard remains the same. It's holiness or it's hell. Now, you know, you, the Holy Ghost may not, may not have you to present it that way. But you need to let them know. See, sometimes we give people half truth. She says her whole life is half true. We give, we give them half the truth. Now listen, you have to be wise. You know, you might need to preach to them on love for three months. Be led by the Spirit. But you got to give them, listen, there is a result. There is a repercussion if you choose not to walk with God. I'm not telling you this to scare you. I'm just, I'm just letting you know what the end. If you're on the right road, the Bible said the end is destruction. 
give them the whole picture. But be wise. But it's time. Church, body of Christ, love and action. Sister Nan, Sister Noodle, Sister Tan, Sister Hubbard, Sister Jack, Sister Keisha, Toya, Tariva, Tamaya, Nikki, Brother Tony, Antoine, Brother Julie, Renee, it's time. It's time. Sister Sarifa, it's time. Brother Leonardo, it's time. Deacon Joe, it's time. Time, Sister Mary, Sister Mary Ann. It's time, Sister Connie. Mr. Dory, it's time. It's time. Look around. The Bible says in the fullness of time when God sent Jesus. Listen, it, it's time, y'all. It's time. All the promises of God and all the, the prophecies that's been placed on this ministry in years past, We weathered the storm. Oh, it got to raining real hard one time. I'm talking about in the ministry, things happening. You know, people leaving, whatever. I mean, people talking about it. Just all kind of stuff. Raining real hard. It got the thunder and lightning. And God, what is it? What have we? We ain't did nothing to nobody. What is it? God said, I'm going to pray on you. And we weathered the storm. We took some blows from the enemy. But we're still standing. God said, all right. It's time. It's time. Line of duty, it's time. It's time. Jesus is no longer the lamb in the little old crib. He's the lamb of God, but now he's the royal lion. So it's time for us to step up with authority. Not boasting. Because it's all because it's a grace. But yet, we can stand firm on who we are in him. Tell the dying world, there's a Savior. His name is Jesus Christ. And his grace is sufficient. You can't go too far that he can't reach you. His grace also will give you power to walk the thing, Deacon Martin. Glory to God. Glory to God. Man, I, I tell you, for the last couple of months, I've just been riding in my truck. Just, just not, I wouldn't say praying, but just thinking. I'm 52 years old. God, I, I mean, God, what is it? What is it for me to do for you? I mean, you know. I'm trying to, you know, do all you want me to do. Yeah, God, I, I want to see, I want to see some. I want when I say see some results, I want to see some souls getting saved, people getting healed. I want your power to be prevalent. And God, in every believer, I thought about love and action first, but I say, God, in every believer. The song that says, let your power fall when your name is called. God, every time we call your name, we want your power to fall. Prove the doubt is wrong. You are still mighty. And you are still strong. He's still God. I got anybody there that ready to go with me? Who, who ready? I'm talking about to, to take this thing for the kingdom of God. Watch this. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to get out y'all way. You may lose some friends along the way. You may lose some friends along the way. People may talk about you. They're going to say, you think you're holding it now? All that. No, I'm, I'm, I'm nobody without him. But I am somebody in him. And like Pastor Stacy said, you know, you ain't got to go speaking in tongue. Like, you got you to be wise about it. Speaking in tongue, all of that. But the love of God ought to just exude out of Christians. When you're being squeezed on, I, and at my job, I'm, I'm the foreman at my job, and I got some people that's working under me that's not of the same color. 
it, 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 every, at least once a week, the Holy Ghost has to shh, don't say nothing. At least once a week. Because Pastor, I'm going to be honest, I be want to tell somebody off. I'm just, I'm just going to be real. But that mean verse of me, it helped me. It helped me. Because the Holy Ghost told me one day, he said, okay, if, if you do go ahead and tell them off and put them in their place because you, you know you got authority over them. But they know you're a preacher. So what's the, what, what are you willing to weigh for that? You're willing to weigh that, you know, he, he my boss and he told me with the attitude that he told me, but he's supposed to be a preacher. Do you want that to sit with them or do you want to come mild manner that they can, afterward they can say, man, I, I didn't expect that. You have to check it sometime. That's why I say you're ready to go. It, it's not going to be easy. You got to literally bite your tongue sometimes. You know, when you bite your tongue, it hurts. Anybody ever bit their tongue? When you bite your tongue, it hurts. But you have to bite your tongue sometimes. But the Bible declares walking. See, that's walking that narrow road. Walking that narrow road. At the end, God Almighty, is eternal life. It's eternal life. It's the glory of God. It's the goodness of God. Everything at the end of that road, God says, it's going to be well worth it. It's going to be well worth it. It's going to be well worth it. So it, 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 it's time. It's time. It's time. On your jobs. I mean, when you, whenever you can get a word in, you, you, a lot of times, yeah, you will sit back when God gives an opportunity. Sometimes you just can't, can't wait for an opportunity. You have to be sensitive to the spirit now. You have to be sensitive to the spirit. In other words, go looking for an opportunity. I think that's a better way to put it. Go looking for an opportunity to share God. Don't just wait for one. Go looking. Go looking for one. And I'm going to turn on the power stage. But I went to Circuit K the other day. Got me a couple of hot dogs. Oh. Guy was in there that know my dad every time. He's standing at the door all the time. Hey, cuz, how you doing? And he was telling me the guy that was working there said, that guy, that, guy, that guy don't believe in Jesus. I said, oh, man. So he said, every time somebody come in here, I try to talk about Jesus in front of him. I said, oh, man. I said, okay. You know, I'm, just, I'm trying to, you know, feel it. You know what I'm saying? Feel the, feel the survey and stuff. So we was in there. He was just he was just talking loud about Jesus, you know. And it sort of got you know, look look when I said a little bit out of hand or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So I um so I start easing my way out the door. You know. He start, I'm just you know, I'm just, you know, you gotta be what I mean. So I start just start easing my way out the door. And uh so we got outside, so he was still talking outside. So I finally was able to get a word in. And uh then I said, you know, I said, a lot of times. Cause, was y'all 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 don't know the guy oh, y'all don't know the guy so, I mean he be in there this the same guy that's standing there he be in there he be buying lottery tickets and all that kind of stuff you know what I'm saying so only thing spirit let me say look a lot of times it's not what you say they watching what you do that's all I said I'm not I mean listen like I said I'm not condemning nobody we all got faults now we all sin but if you know if you if you're trying to witness to a particular person it's not just what you say. It's what they see you do.